Hi everyone and welcome back to Nina's Chelsea Corner. Welcome to my channel if you're new around here. I hope you're all doing well today. I am back with a match review. I didn't go to today's game and it's the first one I've missed in a while but I couldn't go but I'm here with a match review. Chelsea beat Preston 4-0 at home. It's safe to say that the two halves were very different but we'll get into that shortly. But we're through to the next round. It's a win and it's a clean sheet. Things that don't come as a given at Chelsea nowadays. So I'm really not going to have too much to complain about. Take it for what it is. Move on. We've got a semi-final coming up. We've got a Premier League game that we need to win. So yes, let's get straight into it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Leave your comments as always as I go through my thoughts. If you agree, disagree with anything I say. But let's get straight in. So so it was great to see that Alfie, and I think this is how you pronounce his second name, I've learned from my, I think it's Gilchrist, and if it's not, then I'm sorry, I'm just going to call you Alfie until I figure this out. But he made his full debut um, in the senior team, and I'm so pleased for him because he's obviously been coming on in a couple games, and he's looked good. He's exerted a lot of passion on the pitch, you know. Um, he's he's yeah, he's he seemed really good. So it's great to see that he earned his start today. But it was a surprise to see that he wasn't a centre back, and instead he was a right back with Malagusto starting as left back. So you could see that Pochettino. It wasn't going to be a different day at the office. Experiment as you like it. Um, but yeah, I think on the most part, he looked well. He looked good. I think perhaps we didn't utilise him as much because he's obviously not a fullback, you know. And I think defensively, you can see that he's got quality there. But like moving forward, I don't think he's uh, got as much in terms of like overlapping, offering support to like our right wing, etc. But that's normal. Am I going to criticise a centre back that's played as a right back on his first full debut? No, I'm not. But you can equally say the same thing on the other side. I think partly why we looked so flat in the first half with nothing happening, trying to break down Preston's low block was because there was no attack from our fullbacks. You know, there was no... um idea moving forward and it was often we'd get to that final third and we either got dispossessed or we just passed back and it was the cycle of rinse and repeat and there was just no breakthrough and Preston's press in the first half looked so dangerous they grew into that game and they capitalized on the fact that we weren't making anything of it you know they thought this Chelsea team is here for the taking and uh yeah they had a few moments of their own I thought the way they moved the ball as well at times was great you know first touch passes very sort of fluid moving forward didn't exactly um make Petrovic work very hard at all but there was still something that they were trying to offer I think with the continuation of the game and obviously us switching up uh, the formation substitutions we made um things obviously lit up in the second half there was more liveliness more intensity and i think they gradually got more tired and exhausted so it was a mixture of both really that um just yeah saw the game um happen in our favor basically but um yeah again look very poor first half but when you walk away with a 4 nil win it's hard to just focus solely on the negativity and it's always about how you finish the game off and we finished it off in the right way so job done that's all we needed to do to get through to the next round it would have been a very different situation if that game had been a draw because there would have been absolutely no reason no excuse for us to invite that pressure of having to add an extra game in our fixture list when it's already apparently too tough to handle even though we're not in Europe, apparently. And uh, yeah, have to go away uh, to their away ground and uh, try to get a win there. So I'm just pleased that we got the win because again, just would have been a very unnecessary problem to have. We should have the quality to be beating them. No disrespect, but you know, Preston are in the championship. Chelsea are supposed to be winning comfortably here. Um, but fair play to Preston. Really, really props to them for some of the football that they played today, especially in midfield at times. They looked, um, yeah, like they were moving the ball very well and at times you could see when Breuer received the ball in the first half he'd have three four men on his back and yeah even though I'd say it was half and half him not making the right decision of where to make his movement to and also just being overly um, marked by Preston obviously they'd be instructed to he's our centre forward after all um, and yeah and I think that's why his game was so inhibited in the first half but really really different in the second so pleased that he got his goal what an assist by Malaga 
Callisto, by the way. And, you know, he's really lucky that in that situation, even though he was on the left, he still was able to take a touch, put it on his right foot and get a great cross off. And look at that magic. When your centre forward is in the penalty area, apparently they can receive a cross and put it away. And this is what I've been faulting Jackson and Breuer for um, this season, is that they gravitate towards the wings so much that when crosses are being put into the penalty area, nobody's there to meet them because our wingers, well, not our wingers, yeah, our strikers are pretending to be wingers. And that is exactly what we need to get better at. So great to see he was in the right place. The great heads are pinpointed perfectly in the back of the net and the score has opened. And then, of course, things changed and lightened up really quickly after that, I thought. Poch decided to make some substitutions. I did scratch my head a little bit because I thought we are now 1-0 up and you're going to... Uh, he brought Alfie off, obviously. He brought Thiago Silva on and I thought, OK, now are we going to, you know, just sit back and are we a bit fearless? Are we not going to go for a second goal? You know, we want more control in our back line and uh, he's going to obviously switch up the fullbacks as well. And that is exactly what he did. But nobody was complaining because Thiago Silva... Yeah, beautiful set piece. His movement, guys, by the way, to receive that ball from Palmer and uh, header it in was brilliant, you know? And here I am, I'm being told that Thiago Silva shouldn't be playing anymore at this level. Okay, sure. You know, Chelsea haven't been good at scoring from set pieces, yet we scored twice from set pieces today. So that's obviously a great um, improvement, but can we keep it up is the big question. So again, really, really good. Obviously, Sterling's free kick, that just, yeah, really sealed things and made us feel like we've actually taken control and been able to kill this game off something that just didn't look like it was going to happen in the first half so really really uh, really really great obviously that's um Raheem Sterling's second free kick this season scored in that way um really great was he great in that game though <laughs> that is a big question mark for you guys. He got a goal and an assist, but he was so frustrating to watch at times. And that's what you get with Raheem Sterling, you know? Time and time again this season, I've watched him try to dribble through defenders and just lose the ball at his feet. He will not make the right pass. He'll make decisions like he did against Wolves where he'll shoot straight at the keeper instead of passing to two of his teammates or picking a corner or chipping the keeper. And it's like, Sterling, you have to do better. So, I mean, I guess when your moment comes and you obviously seize it and you score, then fair enough, we can let you off the hook a little bit. But still, I need to see more Sterling and I need to see more in the Premier League because it's times like that where you're thinking, sorry, you're costing uh, players like Madweke, for example, of getting game time. And I kind of get why Madweke didn't start. And I kind of get why maybe Sterling did. Because let's be real, guys, I don't think Madweke is going to be playing very much moving forward. It's just my opinion. It's not because I don't want him to. No, exactly the opposite. But I just think that Pochettino just won't drop Sterling and he wants to give him that start. He wants to give him the momentum going into an important game like a semi-final, uh, Premier League games that we need to be winning. He wants to, yeah, got, wants to give him these games so that he can get straight back in after suspension. And it's sad really because I want Madweke to play. When he came on, things looked so lively. Madweke shoots. He takes on players you know he does the flicks and the tricks but there's also the end product there and you saw it when he scored twice in two games and you saw it when he came on and we equally could have seen another goal from him today could have been five there could have literally been another two opportunities there for Madweke to capitalize and I love that for him because he looks so intelligent with the ball he's got energy you know he's got creativity and he's not just that winger that will you know always take it up till the uh the end and try and get a cross off he likes to cut in you know he inverts and I just think that that's so important to have on the pitch from a player let's talk about Mikhailo Mudrik because I think Mudrik just shouldn't have been substituted that early guys like do you agree with me I think especially after that first goal he almost and to be fair he worked to retrieve the ball on that first goal didn't he to give it to Malagusto to give it to Broya get the goal so he was equally at uh, credit there for that goal and Immediately after, he almost, um, yeah, I think he almost uh, had an assist himself for, for Breuer as well, because there was another opportunity, I think, that he missed there, um, Breuer. But how good was that from him? But again, he was brought off. I hope that we do see more of him, because I think he did struggle again in the first um, half, because he was getting dispossessed. But frankly, there was just not many options, because everyone was static behind the ball. Nobody was really trying to support him in any way. And it comes when you don't really have 
fullbacks. Um, so yeah, Malagusto is so much better on the right hand side. You can see that when he's putting crosses off with his right foot from the right hand side, he is utilized much better. You know, why would you, Poch, and here I'm going to talk about Poch, why would you inhibit a player um, from giving you less from his game by playing him in a different position? These are experiments that we don't need to be making. And I said this, you know, you've got um, Levi Colwell, who we finally saw play as a centre back. We were really happy about it, but lol, jokes on us because straight back to the left when uh, substitutions were made and but it's games like that where okay you're already playing um Levi Cole as a left back all season if you want to do the same continue on put him on the left let Gusto play on the right and start Alfie as a centre back you know doesn't that make a lot more sense and the only reason I'm not dwelling on this point too much is because we won and it didn't actually cause that much of an issue but Poch said something about us being our biggest enemies but sometimes he overcomplicates it himself you know why do players need to continuously play out of position it's so much pressure handing a player that young like Alfie his first full debut and playing him out of position you know the boy did very well and props to him because that was uh yeah again a great performance but anyways so not gonna uh talk about that too much but that's just my opinion on it but yeah, guys, job done, 4-0, Chelsea win through to the next round. And we actually have, yeah, uh, another step to take in the in the other domestic cup. So on to Middlesbrough. That's going to be uh, obviously another difficult game because, come on, nothing's ever easy at Chelsea. But hopefully we can take some momentum, momentum in. Special shout out to Enzo as well for the fourth goal. Um, great to see him on the score sheet and also back in our lineup. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, like this video if you've enjoyed it. Let me know, as always, your comments uh, Yeah, in the comments down below. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend. Thank you so much.